All right, folks, in this video, I'm going to give you a quick introduction into scientific thinking. The very first thing that I want you to know is what is a dependent variable? A dependent variable is dependent on an experiment. It is the outcome and it is what is being measured. Let's take a look at this classic experiment, which really is just is two experiments. One comparing sun and water for a plant with just sun and one comparing sun and water with just water. This is really two different experiments. But in both cases, what is being measured, the outcome is plant growth. Is the plant happy or unhappy? Does it look healthy or unhealthy? How tall is the plant? How much does the plant weigh? What is its mass? The dependent variable is the outcome and it is what is being measured. The independent variable is the next thing I want you to learn. It's what is being changed. And remember, I said that these are like two different experiments. In the first experiment, you're taking away water. So the independent variable is water versus no water. In the second set of experiments, you're taking away sun. So the independent variable is sun versus no sun. It's what is being changed. So you have two independent variables in these two different experiments. The control variable is the most important uh, thing. And control variables are all the things that are kept consistent across experiments. So in this first experiment, sun is being controlled. You have sun in both cases. It's being kept consistent. In the second experiment, water is being kept consistent. You have water in both cases. In actuality, there are more control variables than just sun and water here. They probably use the same pot size. They probably use the same soil. They should have put it near the same window with the same amount of sunlight or water, depending on what they were keeping consistent. Control variables are everything that's kept the same across experiments. And for an experiment to be valid, as valid as possible, you must control for as much as possible. So at the, you need to basically keep almost everything the same, but change just one thing. Let me give you an example that's a little bit more modern for today. Some people aren't, uh, might, you know, like a year ago, they were questioning whether or not masks work. Well, you could do an easy experiment to determine whether or not masks work. For example, let's say you have two groups of people and one you wear masks and one you wear no masks. Here, the dependent variable is whether or not they would get sick. Let's say in 60 days, do they get sick? That is what is being measured. That's the dependent variable. What is the independent variable? What is being changed? Well, one group has masks and one group has no masks. What would you want to control between these two groups in order to determine whether or not masks were truly effective? Well, this is what you would not want to do is say, put old people in one group and young people in the other group. You would not want to do that because that wouldn't be controlling for age. What you wouldn't want to do is look at people from, say, Colorado Springs and people from Denver. You would not want to take the two groups from two different cities because their location is changing. That becomes an independent variable. You're not uh, controlling for their location. You uh, would not want to put people who, let's say you take their weight and you have uh, people who are considered overweight and people who are considered average weight in one group or the other. That would not be a good control. That would not be consistent across experiments. What you would want to do to have maximum control 
is to take these two groups of people from the same location. Ideally, they would be of similar ages and of similar health with an equal distribution of male and female. Now, because you can't usually do that, you can't usually uh, find people of all the exact same age or all the exact same health, usually you draw a random group. And the biggest takeaway from this section today is that if you want a lot of control to see whether or not something really works, whether masks really work, you want a randomly selected group that is as similar as possible so that the only thing different between the two groups are masks versus no masks. And the best way to achieve that is randomization. The second thing I want you to know about is primary sources versus secondary sources. This is still an extremely important issue. Let's read this together. Primary sources are those where Actual experiments were performed and data was collected and reported. Let me give you some examples. When you come across different news sources or different articles, I want you to be able to identify whether or not what you're reading is a primary source or secondary source. Did the people themselves actually do the experiment or are they just reporting other people's findings? Let's take a look. Here is an article from Nature Medicine. The title, Respiratory Virus Shedding and Exhaled Breath and Efficacy of Face Masks. All of these, this is the title of the article. And it's basically, in this case, uh, well, let me just first say that all of these people all the, are the authors of this article and they contributed to the research. You see that this is, there's a couple of things that we, can note to tell that this is an actual science article, which is a primary source. You have all of these authors that contributed. You see that it's cited by other authors, so it shows you how many people cited. The title is very clear, concrete, to try to give one clear conclusion. The biggest thing of all is the source is Nature Medicine. And if you just look at the look of it, it's and you look at the language that they use, you can tell that this is a scientific journal which publishes findings from experiments. They use a lot of citations. So you'll see at the bottom when people uh, cite their information, they tell where their information is given. And that gives it a, a high credibility that it's more of a primary source. And if more importantly, if you were to read this article, let's take a look at the abstract. This is, we identify seasonal human coronaviruses, influenza viruses, and rhinoviruses in exhaled, exhaled breath. They are saying that this is what they did. This is an experiment that they did, and it's a primary source, and they report data to back it up. This is their data. So this is a primary source. Let's take a look at another example, though. If, for example, I'm looking at uh, children are not COVID-19 super spreaders, time to go back to school. Well, let's take a look. This is going to be also, let me see here. Let's take a look. Actually, this is not the best example. Let's, I'm going to move on to another example. This is an article that has to do with remdesivir, and it's from Newsweek. And it's saying that this is news. Remdesivir shows promise as coronavirus treatment. Well, if you were to read through this, it says early results from a clinical trial of the experimental drug reportedly show promising results. Now the question is, did these people do the experiment or are they communicating results from somebody else? They are communicating results from somebody else and they're citing the study, but they themselves didn't do the study. This is from a news organization. So this is a secondary source. I'm not saying secondary sources are necessarily worse than primary sources because people who uh, sometimes do research articles, 
you know, ne you need to take a look at what they're saying in order to verify whether or not what they're saying is true. But prime, but there is a difference between primary sources and, se and secondary sources. And knowing the difference is the most important thing. Let's take a look at one last example. This is from the CDC. The CDC, <clears throat> well, would you classify this as a primary source or secondary source? Sometimes the CDC collects data from hospitals and they will generate research from the data they collect. That would be considered when they're a primary source. But sometimes they take information from other uh, research uh, scientists. So like they take uh, information from primary sources and then turn it into recommendations. So they are a combination of both primary and secondary sources. So really, that's what I want you to take away from today is whether or not a, pri a source is primary or secondary and the difference between dependent, independent and control variables. And that's it for today. Thanks.